If you were hoping to watch a video featuring affordable pedals that just happen to have adorable bakery-based Japanese art on them, well, you're in luck because that's exactly what you're gonna get in this video. I've covered this brand before, the Effects Bakery. In fact, there's already two of them on the affordable board. People loved that video. People bought a bunch of these, and so they sent me more because that's how marketing works. <laughs> So anyways, I think there's a bunch of dirt pedals in here, some drives, a distortion, something else. I can't quite remember. It's been a month or so since the email, but let's find out. I wanna crack it open and see what we've got here. Where's my scout knife? I think I'm opening the bottom. <laughs> Probably doesn't matter. Here we go. One's already opened up. It's got a sandwich on it. The sandwich fuzz. That's right. I only tried one of the fuzzes and there's another one. This is the Choco Cornet EQ. I love good EQ pedal. This is the Bagel Overdrive. The affordable board desperately needs an overdrive. I've actually been thinking, even though I like the Amazon Basics Bezos distortion here, I don't use distortion as much as I use overdrive and the Kuvave is more than enough distortion. So if I find a decent overdrive in this bunch, it might just make it on the board by default. The Melon Pan Chorus, Croissant Distortion. Watch, I'm gonna swap out the distortion for another distortion, not even put an overdrive on there. Oh yeah, I think this is the power supply and the, re the rest is all just packaging. You have this cute little power supply because everything they do is cute. <laughs> Look at this little guy. We have achieved focus. <laughs> what do we have here? 200 milliamp times 10, that's plenty. That actually might be perfect for the Praise and Worship Affordable Board. This probably has more power and more outputs than what I'm currently using under there. Interesting, I'll have to uh, explore that. I've got all the cables here. Got a wall wart for it. Yeah, that might end up underneath the Praise and Worship Affordable Board for sure. All right, let's get these plugged in and ready to go. In Affordable Board tradition, I'm gonna use an affordable guitar. This time, this Harley Benton, Mose Ridey, Univoxy style thing here. It's got P90 sized humbuckers that are coil splittable. It's got stainless steel frets. It has locking vintage style tuners. What else? It's just fun. It's a fun guitar and it's a great price. I'm glad that I have it. Maybe you'll want to have it too. I'll have a link down in the description. And of course, I'll be using the two Princeton's rig. There it is. <laughs> All right, here is my clean signal. There we go. All right, let's get started. The fuzz, the sandwich fuzz. I vaguely remember this is a triangle muff. I mean, look at the sandwich on it. It is a triangle shape, isn't it? Just checking my focus, because <laughs> I'm nervous about that. All the knobs are down.
I mean, there's a muff. Holy heck. That thing's alive. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great sounding fuzz. Jeez. I've covered a lot of muffy style fuzzes for the affordable board. And they all sound muffy. But there's something about that that's just, maybe it's just the mood I'm in right now. Getting myself a, a big serving of fuzz first thing in the morning, right after breakfast. I think it's what I needed. <laughs> trying to find like the blooming point where it goes from like a little bit of like a hump in the gain where it goes from very very fuzzy to extremely fuzzy and if you can just ride that hump then you can get a little bit of dimensionality out of your playing dynamic <laughs> Clearly, it's a, it's a great sounding fuss. So let's move on because I'm gonna end up sitting here, just jamming nasty fuzz riffs all day long. And I know that a lot of you probably want that, but I don't want to edit it. <laughs> on to the bagel overdrive. I have no idea what style of drive this is gonna be. It's orange. What overdrives are orange? I don't think these are color-coded to represent anything outside of this line. So if it's a two screamer, it might just be a two screamer. It's, it doesn't have to be green to be a two screamer, but let's find out. Maybe I'll be able to identify it. I'm not always great at identifying overdrive circuits. <laughs> I like it on the lower 
screen setting. It has a little bit of like a high nasal thing going on, a loose grit, but like a compressed, like crunchy thickness. <laughs> with those coils split for a single coil tonality. That's what I like. That's the light style overdrive that I like. There's a really good chance this is ending up on the affordable board today. Lightly crunchy, kind of compressed, interesting kind of tonal quality where it thickens, but it also has this bright quality from this nasal high mid thing that's floating around in there. It's a jump out of the mix sort of overdrive. Barky. Let's check out the extreme range of the game. Something I want to see is how it filters the fuzz. I, you know, being a big fan of the DoD 250 circuit, I like to use that at the end of my dirt chain, and I often run fuzzes into it, treating it like a kind of edge of breakup amplifier. I don't think this is going to be that style of overdrive where it filters a fuzz in a nice way, but I'm willing to be surprised. <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> filtering a little bit too much, maybe a bit too much there, a lot bit too much for that style of application. It's not doing the amp overdrive style thing. I'm, I'm not ready to say it's a tube screamer, but I think it is an adjacent style circuit. It doesn't have that fizziness to it. It's something else. It's got a mid hump, but it's a high mid hump. I feel like it's something else. It's not a tube screamer. Wow. 
watch is totally a two screen room. almost guarantee it's going on the board today. All right, on to the croissant distortion. It's a dirty, dirty, dirty affordable board video this time. No idea what this is based on. Might as well turn it all the way up, right? tone all the way up it's got this low and low mid thickness to it It's almost like it's a passive tone stack. It's not boosting highs on the bright side of it. It's more like it's just wide open. And as you roll this back, it gets darker. <laughs> Lauren is sneaking into the laundry room <laughs> to close the door. <laughs> it's okay, honey. <laughs> I need to have a camera on the laundry room door. <laughs> Gain setting is gritty. It's got that torn speaker kind of quality to it.
chorus it's a chorus pedal let's see what we're in for here we already know that effects bakery has a modulation that i like we've got the butter roll vibe on here we finally got a univibe on the affordable board let's see what this does <laughs> lush right off the bat that sounds good this brand effects bakery they're killing it bring the right way down go full depth and full mix see how wacky it'll get vibrato on you. That sounds pretty great. Sounds great. It gets really fast, which is nice. On the slower settings, it does kind of that like dimension chorus sort of sound, which I really like. This might kick the Univibe effects bakery pedal off of the affordable board. That's a great sounding chorus.
and flange, flange, flang, however you pronounce it, are closely related effects. And I feel like this is kind of skirting that line. It's giving you that sweeping, filtery sort of sound that you get with a flange, with a flanger, with a flanger but doing it in a chorusy sort of way. So if you're chasing like the police tonality, you're trying to sound like the police who famously make chorus sounds with flangers, this might be a really solid affordable chorus for you to track down. I mean, track it down. I've got links in the description. <laughs> On to Choco Cornet. EQ. I don't know what a Choco Cornet is, but it looks delicious. Some sort of chocolate baked good. I'm assuming there's like a, a custard filling inside, but it's a little cute face on this one. I'd, I'd eat it up. I don't care if it's got a little face on there. I'm going to take a bite and it's going to scream. And I'm going to think the scream is adorable and I'm not going to stop. Honestly, all these pebbles are making me hungry. I could go for that exact sandwich right now. A little triangle cut sandwich with some lettuce and tomato in there. I'm assuming there's some there's some meat hiding underneath the bread as well. Even if it's just lettuce and tomato, that sounds refreshing. All right, EQ. An extremely important underutilized effect. Multi-band EQs like this. I said this in the last affordable board video. If you don't have a graphic EQ on your board, if you've never tried one, Please just get any of them. Try any graphic EQ. Like you'll be shocked at what it does for you. Whether you put it at the end of your chain or before, if you want to stack it into dirt pedals or filter them afterwards, it can do incredible things for you. I'm going to do it afterwards to really show off, you know, what's going on here. Maybe I'll swap it to the front as well, just to show that off. Am I out of tune? It sounds like I'm out of tune. The weather has been changing. The seasons have been seasoning. <laughs> and all my guitars are starting to acclimate and adjust. Acting like stringed barometers. So this should all be flat right now. master and a volume control here. What, what, what would a master do versus a volume? That's interesting. It's like two different volumes. Is it a pre-volume and a post-volume? Volume and then master volume. about there it sounds pretty much the same but what if I did this it sounds like it is driving some dirt within the pedal is this a secret dirt pedal Ooh, <laughs> that's fun It's a secret dirt pedal. Oh, I like that. I thought I was saving something boring for last. No, this is something very exciting. driving my amps. That's not what's going on here. I know that they're not loud enough to be driven by this right now. That is dirt coming from this EQ pedal clipping. 
Not exactly like, but it's, it's like a dirty boost. It's like an EP booster or something like that. That has a five band EQ in front of it. like unintentional like glitchy torn speaker sort of grit that's going on with that's right I'm doing link ray twice in this video comes from that lowest slider. All right, let's use it in a more traditional way and filter some of the other drives here. Might as well start with the fuzz.
try swapping it around and putting it in front of that overdrive, which means I'll just pull out the fuzz for the time being. We'll drive it. Cockwa sounds in there. Someday you're going to listen to me. Someday you're going to take my advice and you're going to finally buy yourself a graphic EQ. Maybe not this one, but you're going to buy one and you're going to find out that it's the secret. It is the secret to finding that tone that you've been searching for. Not swapping out all your overdrive pedals because it doesn't sound quite right. You just need to find the dirt pedals that have the grit that you like and then treat them either from the front of their signal or after their signal with some EQ. That's really all you need to do and you're gonna find your sound. I, I promise you, I guarantee it. I mean, I have no way of backing that up. <laughs> but it's worth doing, do it. All right, let's figure out which of these have a shot on the affordable board. We know the overdrive has a shot. The chorus, maybe. I'm not, I'm not gonna swap out the Kuvave for the fuzz. I think that fuzz as a triangle style muff, I'm assuming a triangle style muff because it has a triangle sandwich on it. 
<laughs> that's really all I'm going off there. I'm assuming that's a triangle style muff. It sounds fantastic. It really does. Right out, right out of the gate. I was like, yeah, I'm having fun. But the Kuvave, it just is the Kuvave. How do you kick the Kuvave off the affordable board with a muff? I want the nastiest, grittiest, silliest fuzz I can find for the affordable board. And that's the Kuvave. I know they, they travel under different names now. The Shark Chili, the M Vave, and things like that. I'll put a link down below for whatever current version of it I can find. But yeah, the Overdrive. I think I'm going to swap out the Bezos Distortion. Sorry, Bezos. It's just what's going to happen. I don't really need Distortion. I've already got the Kuvave for that. I need an Overdrive, though. Not having an overdrive on the affordable board is embarrassing. I'm embarrassed. And I also really, really like that Sonic Cake Octaver. I could put it there, but I want that Octaver. It's a lot of fun. So let's uh, let's show off the affordable board now and show what we've got going on. And then we'll debate whether or not... There we go. We'll debate whether or not I'm going to swap out that butter roll vibe for the melon ball chorus. Something on the affordable board is making a gritty sound. And it's not even on. I, maybe it's the Octaver. Oh, bummer. I think it's the Octaver. Well, I'm going to leave it on, but we'll figure out a replacement for it here in the near future. Ah, bummer. How come I didn't notice that until now? got a leaky true bypass switch or something. All right, let's go through the affordable board and then we'll discuss whether or not we're gonna swap out that vibe for the chorus. the Kuvavi. I, you know, I hope someday that it gets dethroned by something amazing. But jeez, listen to that. I 
after all this time, the most guy spring reverb is still the victor as far as reverbs go on the affordable board. It's not the best spring reverb, but it's the best of the affordable board pedals at doing that sound, even though it's a clicky, belt and bricky sort of approximation of a spring reverb. It just has the right tonality. Do you guys think I should give up on spring reverb sounds on the affordable board though and focus on more modern, lush, maybe plate or modulated like shimmered sounds and things like that? That's for the worship affordable board. That's for the praise and worship affordable board, right? Not for this one. <laughs> to all the other pedals in the affordable board down in the description. But let's do a quick comparison between that vibe and the chorus and try to make a hard decision. We'll swap out the uh, Octaver for now. I don't want this to become an all effects bakery board, but they've been really good, right? Am I just imagining that because I like the cute little characters and the bright colors. Like they're really good. I've been really impressed with the sounds of the circuits. Thank you. 
know what? It's too hard of a decision for me to make for myself. Comment down below. Melon Pan Chorus or Butter Roll Vibe? What should stay on the affordable board? It can't be both. They're too close as far as like modulation concepts go, even though they sound very different from each other. More of a filtered chorus on the edge of flange sound with the melon pan and just that more transparent. It lets, it lets the dirt really through. It lets that dirt come through. But it still gives you this really fun, sweepy movement. It's fairly unique. I don't run into a lot of univibes for the affordable board. I feel like I'm leaning towards that, but maybe you guys will think different. Melon pan or butter roll vibe? Hit the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me a rude and nasty comment, support us on Patreon, buy a shirt if you're naked, and stay grounded. I know that I was supposed to, you know, I said I was gonna install this on the Praise and Worship Affordable Board, but this video is running real long, so I'll do it on my own time and feature it next time that board shows up on the channel. Once again, huge thanks to Effects Bakery for sending out all these pedals, and I already said it, but stay grounded. Bye, everybody.